Good morning. This is Pastor Mary Armstrong Reiner from St. John Lutheran Church in Griffith, Georgia. Coming to you by the Mississippi River in Hannibal, Missouri, my hometown. Uh, I was raised in this area, born in Hannibal, raised on the Illinois side just across the way is where my brothers live and farm where I grew up. And I just wanted to share this view with you this morning and wish you a wonderful Sunday morning worship. You will find in the service today a, a combination of music from different members of our congregation and friends of the congregation. You will find guest pastors who will be sharing with us. Uh, we want to thank Pastor Barb Gibson for July 5th, Pastor Michael Jeanette from the Senate office for July 12th, and Pastor Jonathan Trapp from Lutheran Church of the Redeemer for July 19th. We will be sharing uh, the same general prayers for every Sunday service, but we'll be adding in the birthdays, anniversaries, and baptisms to each of those weeks. We pray that you are having a wonderful day and that you will be blessed by being a part of this service as you watch it. While I am apart from you all, I pray for you and ask God to watch over you and keep you safe and guide you. And I look forward to seeing you once again in the coming weeks. Happy July. We invite you now to join us for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for, your own for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us through your love renew us and in your spirit lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life amen beloved of god by the radical abundance of divine mercy we have peace with god through christ jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace our sins are forgiven let us live now in hope for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Please join with me if you have the prayer, the prayer of the day. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with our Kyrie and then with our readings of the day. chapter 9 verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumph and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning. The psalm this morning is 145, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your powers to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all of his words 
and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. Amen. The second reading is from Romans chapter 7, verses 15 through 25a. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me. That is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. For if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel this morning comes to us from Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the streets in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. <laughs> for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. And the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and of sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please pray with me this morning. Lord, take our minds and think through them, take our mouths and speak through them, and take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Good morning. My name is Pastor Barb Gibson, and I have been asked by Pastor Mary to be with you today while she is away. It is a joy to see you virtually. Thank you for joining us in this time of worship this morning. If St. Paul were an eighth grader and had to take the Georgia milestones, he'd bomb the written selection. His sentences are run on and convoluted. You'd have to have a master's degree in understanding ancient Greek rhetoric style to decipher it. I don't have such a degree, but we're going to look into his letter at the, of the, to the church at Rome nonetheless. So let me find it quickly in my Bible. And we'll look again at Romans, the seventh chapter. Paul says, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I can't do it. For I do not do the good that I want, but the evil that I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it a law that when I want to do what is good, 
evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. <sighs> Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me, rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's a lot, huh? Wow. Paul says, I don't understand. I want to do good. But somehow I just don't manage to get it done. I don't want to do bad stuff. But gosh darn it, that's exactly what I do. Now when I do bad things, that's when the law, the Ten Commandments, kicks in. WWJS. What would Jesus say about the Ten Commandments? He was once asked by an upstart lawyer what the greatest of those ten laws was. He summarized them into two simple points. Love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Not willing to let that be the end of it, the lawyer continued. And just who is my neighbor? Jesus answered by telling the story of the Good Samaritan. We all know it. A man was traveling up to the mountains on his way to the holy city of Jerusalem. He was robbed, beaten, and left for dead. Two passers-by came along, each of them his nationality, his race, his religion. Neither of them stopped to check the man or offer aid. Eventually, a third man came along, a Samaritan, not the same nationality, ethnicity, or religion. Yet he stopped, rendered aid to the beaten man, put him on his right, set him up with medical care in a hotel. Jesus looked at the lawyer. Who was this guy's neighbor? The lawyer answered, the man who showed mercy. The good I want to do, I do not do. The commandments to love God and love our neighbor come back to us again and again. First, love God. Oh, I do love God, we say. God is first in my life. And that, that part about graven images, nope, I don't do that. Unless God looks like Jackson or Hamilton printed on green paper and folded up and put in my purse or my wallet. And I don't use the Lord's name in vain. Damn it. Ooh. I honor the Sabbath and keep it holy, especially between August and January. If I can get out of church at 11, get home by 1130, sandwich made in a beer pop by the time our Falcons are playing. And we know that being on the shore of Lake Lanier on the 4th of July, that is a weekend that is holy time, especially if it's a Sunday. <laughs> the good that I want to do. True story. I went to seminary in Columbus, Ohio, and I was visiting my family who lived in Tampa. I was on the highway back down at 70 miles an hour, not a foot an hour faster, and I got hungry. I noticed on the side of the road there was a sign that said there was a McDonald's hamburger store just at the next exit. I pulled off, and when I got on that off exit, there was a man holding a sign. It said, hungry. I thought, I have money. I can get him a number one meal, a Big Mac fries and a drink. So I stopped at the kiosk where you place your order, made the order, drove through, paid for it, got the food, and drove on. Not a big deal. First of all, I have to admit that I did take a couple of french fries and get them in my mouth. We have to have something greasy and salty when we go to McDonald's after all. It was about 20 or 25 miles down the road that it dawned on me as I finished my Big Mac that I had not bought anything for the man. The good that I want to do. God has forgiven me of that sin. God has not let me forget. I only do the bad that I don't want to do, like I did with the hungry man. Now let's think, if being a good neighbor means loving, doing good means actively loving. Doing bad must be actively hating, right? Not necessarily. I would ask us to consider what it means to be indifferent. In truth, the bad deed that I did to the hungry man was to be indifferent to him. It wasn't that I hated him. It was that I did not show him mercy. I was not a good neighbor.
My intentions were good. My deed was not. Indifference. Beloved, our nation is in terrible pain right now. We struggle with who our neighbor is. An Islamic leader? A bad cop? A pandemic? Those who wear a mask or don't wear a mask? Brown people from Central and South America? Black people? White people? All people who are calling for an end to systemic injustice? And yes, my friends, it is real. Prejudice is real. Racial problems are real. The ELCA is frighteningly monochromatic. Who is my neighbor? It is someone down the block from me, perhaps. Perhaps a GLBT person. We fear they might pervert our children's morals. It's not true, but it's a feeling in a lot of our hearts. Is it our neighbor? who is the kid with a shaved head who holds out an arm in a salute to a regime that promoted white supremacy and systematically murdered six million Jews? Is it the working girl on the streets, painfully thin, meeting yet another guy called John? Who is our neighbor? That church visitor who sits in our pew in our seat? Recently, a video has gone viral. It showed a 75-year-old white protester being shoved down by a police officer. He stumbled backwards and hit his head so hard that he started to bleed. No matter your personal in, uh, interpretation of what that event was, the story doesn't end there. The reality of the man's fall is that no one showed him mercy. More than a dozen uniformed officers walked by the old man. I don't think they actually hated that individual human being. At least I'd like to think not. I'm sure that specific group of police was following an order issued by a superior, some commander. But none of those men and women followed a higher command to show mercy, to love their neighbor. Not one soul dressed in blue stopped. In fact, no one did until a group of folks dressed in desert camouflage passed by. It was the National Guard. And one person stopped, knelt down, and checked the old man. One person showed mercy. One person loved. St. Paul said, Since I do what is not good, I must admit there is no good, no love of my neighbor or God in this earthly body. I'm a sinner if I do not love, if I do not show mercy. But it's not I, my essence, that does the wrong. It's the sin that lives within me. Oh, dear God, I don't understand. It's so confusing. Who can get me out of this mess that I'm in? Thank God for Jesus Christ. Christ and only Christ can lead us to love, to show mercy. Or our challenge in this time, this generation, is to take a long look at our saintly yet sinful selves. We want to do good, but so often we fail. We want to love our neighbor, but these days we can't tell who he or she is. So then how are we to show mercy? Brothers and sisters, please pray. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our country. Pray for the ill, the unjust, the oppressed, pray for our neighbors, pray to be shown who those neighbors are. Take on the yoke of Christ. It is easy and his burden is light. Do good as best you can. Love God, love your neighbor, show mercy. Amen.
the church throughout the world and the church throughout the ages. Let us profess our faith, the faith in which we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our response to each prayer is, Your mercy is great. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Bless the ministry of Augustinian Lutheran School in Guatemala and St. Johannes in Bavaria. We pray for Grace Missions and Shamewa Orphanage in Haiti. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. great. We pray for the nations, especially the United States and Canada, which are celebrating their nationhood. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Protect those serving in the military, especially today we pray for Sequoia, Chris, and Chance. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is great. Me. We pray for all in need. For all who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed, especially today we remember Kathleen, Terry, Charlie, William, Bob, Karen and Alvin, Susan and David, Brandon, Stephanie and Kimber, Maureen, April, June, Debbie, Pete and Marilyn, Myrna, John, Whitney, Larry and Christy, Sarah, Connie and Charlie, Bobby, Carol, Ken, and Roger. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of celebrations be with those celebrating birthdays this week. For Gretchen and Russ. And be with those celebrating baptisms. For Rebecca, Brandy, and Ken. And those celebrating anniversaries. For Bo and Janet, for Pastor Mary and Pastor David. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift up all others we name in our hearts and on our lips at this time. Grant Betty, Grant Cosby, Grant Rita, and Grant Killen. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those two deeper words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, also with, with you. you. We share with one another a sign of peace. If we are with others, I share peace with you from afar. And now we continue with our special music. <laughs>
music. As we gather our gifts, as we give thanks for those of you who are able to continue to support the work of St. John Lutheran Church or your congregation, we know some of you are struggling this time and we more than understand if you're not able to support the ministry, but the ministry does go on and we appreciate you're giving back a part to God of what God has blessed you with. There are a number of ways to be able to give that. You could um, send it in the mail. The mail will be picked up during the time that we are away and will be counted every week. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, or you could give online. And so our information is either on our website or in our weekly email on how you can give your offering. And now we continue with our prayer of thanksgiving. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name and the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. And now, our spiritual communion. We are isolated and separated. This is for the good of all, but it is painful and lonely. In this time when we are not sharing the Lord's Supper, we know our hunger for your grace even more palpably. This meal... It's forgiveness, healing, solidarity, and abundance is meant for all. This feast is meant to be shared in person and community because your love is an embodied reality given and shed for all. So we wait, listen, watch even more intently than usual for the crisis to pass, for your creatures to live in greater harmony, for your word to become flesh again among us again in this sacrament. Let us sing in anticipation of the day we return to each other in person. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. And now we give thanks. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. For the announcements, I want to give thanks today for Marilyn Drodmiller, for Donna and Lee Brown for the special music, and uh, for the readers, Betty Panic and Heather Lohner. I want to thank Marilyn uh, for coming and recording preludes and postludes and special music that will be used throughout the coming weeks. Um, our office uh, will be open this week, Tuesday through Thursday up to July 2nd. Uh, I'm not sure, I can't remember, but I don't know that the office is open on Friday, July 3rd. Um, and then the office will be closed for sure from July 4th until July 22nd. Uh, the mail will be picked up daily, so if you send in your offering, it will be picked up and held, uh, and it will be counted every week on Friday, uh, but there will be no one in the office, as both Lynn and I will be taking vacation. Um, I will be gone to the Midwest and to Michigan. We will have our last devotion online this Monday night uh, and the 29th of June. There will be no more devotions online until I return, probably not till Wednesday, July 22nd. Uh, I'll have some that evening. Um, there will be no worship in our building in July. We don't have a date for opening yet. Uh, we'll see how everything goes in July with our numbers as far as COVID-19 in our communities. Uh, but our task force has been working very hard on preparing for the time when we will come together. And I'm very grateful and thankful for all of them, for Sandra, for Phyllis, um, for um, Vaughn and for Cheryl and myself, we have all been working together and for the council with their uh, work uh, supporting us and working together. Uh, we hope that there will come a day soon when we will gather, but we don't have that date as of now. Uh, the services in July will be posted at 10 a.m. every Sunday, Eastern Standard Time. 
There will be a guest preacher for every week. Pastor Barb is preaching July 5th. Uh, Pastor Michael Jeanette, who's part of the Senate staff, will be preaching July 12th. And July 19th will be Pastor Jonathan Trapp of Redeemer Lutheran. He also works at the CDC. And so each one of them will be either reading the gospel or having a family member read the gospel, and they will be sharing the sermon. The rest of the service will be filled with music that has been recorded by members and friends of the church. And you will see me and I will be doing the main parts of the liturgy, but it will be the same parts that will be recorded by my son, Sam and I, uh, in a couple days. And Sam will put the whole service together. So we thank all the, all the musicians, all the pastors, all the readers. There will be readers for different each week. And we thank my son, Sam, for all of his hard work. The prayers will not change. Uh, if we have emergency prayer requests, people will send those out. Um, and speaking of which, we ask your prayers for Lisa Maples, Vaughn Jr.'s wife. Uh, I had the privilege of um, officiating at their wedding last November, and Lisa is currently in the hospital in Spalding. Uh, she is in the recovery. I had shared she'd had a stroke. She actually had a very mild stroke, so we are thankful and grateful to God for that. She is on the mend but she is not, uh, things have not settled down enough for her to be able to go home. So we pray that she will be able to go home soon. Uh, we also pray for Vaughn while they are apart and for his moving to their new house. He's getting that ready himself uh, without Lisa as they have closed on the house and will be moving into that into early July. Uh, since you'll be hearing this on Sunday, uh, right after this service, there will be a Zoom coffee hour. If you receive the email, uh, you can just go to it and click on if you don't have it just text me I will be on the zoom coffee hour and I will be able to text you or email you the Link for that if you want to get on with us We had about seven or eight of us together last week and it was really nice Just a conversation checking in on everybody seeing how everybody was doing So if you're able to join us, we would um, really love that I will be in the office this Tuesday if you would like to receive communion I uh, have some time open between 1 and 3, 3.30 p.m. Um, to come in. I'm trying to have no more than three to four people at a time, splitting people up. We do ask you to wear your mask, check your temperature before you come if you're concerned about it, um, and to wash your hands or clean them before you come, or you can do that when you get to the church. Um, but if you would like to receive communion in person, uh, I am running communion to just one or two people who it's better for me to take it to them. But um, if you would like communion, you are welcome to come in um, on Tuesday. Just text me or call me and let me know. We are in the final days of our uh, cleaning up of the house we used to live in. Uh, we've got most everything moved over now for those who might want to know. But we have many boxes that we will not be unpacking until we come back from our trip. Um, as many of you may have heard, I'm gone a little longer as I will be officiating at a wedding of a friend who I promised six years ago when she got engaged to officiate her wedding on July 18th. And I also, one of my dearest friends from college, mother died in April, and I will be doing the graveside service for her uh, mom in uh, the Macon, Missouri area. And so I'm staying longer this time. My brother Tim and I will be driving back a U-Haul, leaving on the 19th. So we ask for your prayers as we leave on the 1st and on our travels that we will be safe and sound and um, that uh, just God will watch over us and keep us from harm and bring us back safely to you all uh, in late July. Um, if you are in need of pastoral emergency, if you have one, please call Lynn and she will be in touch with uh, the pastor that is covering pastoral care duties for me while I'm gone. Um, I wish you all a very happy, safe, and wonderful 4th of July. Um, I pray that if, whether you are home or out and about in the world that you are staying safe and keeping a uh, six feet distance and keeping caution. Um, and we just pray for all to stay safe. Um, may this 4th of July be a blessing for you and your family as we celebrate the many freedoms of our country. And now please join me in the blessing. God bless us with this comfort at easy answers, half truths and superficial relationships so that we may li live deep within our hearts. God bless us with anger and injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. 
God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done. And now the God of all grace bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us remember we are an equipping and responding church that continues to grow impact and transform lives go in peace may the holy spirit guide you thanks be to god and if you can join us for the zoom coffee hour at 11 o'clock today